Okay, hello, hello. So today, I just wanted to respond to some of the comments we got on our, uh, on the post that I did yesterday, the, the quote there about, you know, um, really accepting ourselves, and it's such an essential topic. You know, and so there were two comments. One of them was about feeling kind of shameful and then having a fear of rejection, but then still being um, wondering, like, how do you change what you're attracted to, right? How, how do you impact that? And then the second comment was about worthiness stuff and um, rejecting someone before they can reject you. And I think it's kind of important to talk a little bit about the nuances between shame and guilt. So guilt is really more connected to worthiness stuff. I mean, worthiness goes in hand in hand with, with, with shame as well, but there, there's a little bit of a, a difference between them. So if you're more concerned about being like found out, right? Like if you feel like you, you're sort of, um, if you're really more concerned about other people finding out that maybe you're not as equipped as you're pretending to be or something like that, that's more of a shame based kind of feeling. If you, if, if it's, if you're more concerned about you beating yourself up because you think you're not, that you're like that there's somehow in, something inherently bad about you. Right? It's not even about anyone else finding out anything. It's more about you punishing yourself. That's earlier. That's more guilt stuff. Okay. So in, in the work that I do, we focus in on how these, um, these become kind of layered through the way your chakras develop in development. Right, because so if you're not familiar with chakras, chakras are energy centers in the body, and it comes from the tantric yogic tradition, um, and they develop in a certain sort of developmental sequence up until about adolescence, and then after that, they're all kind of you know active and moving, and some can be over or under active in different areas, and they're kind of connected in a sort of concentric circular kind of way, and I talk a lot more about that through the courses. Um, self-help courses on my online school. But basically, I wanted to just sort of tell you a little bit about the nuances between guilt and shame. And, you know, the question is, well, how do I change what I'm attracted to? Or how do I stop pushing people away out of a fear of them pushing me away? And of course, the answer is always going to be, well, you have to shift your inner space, right? You have to shift what you like. <laughs> and the only way to shift what you like is to shift that inner space, right? Because that's what's calling in. Because um, often what's calling in your life experiences, whatever they may be, is your transcendental self. And your transcendental self is larger than your mind, right? It's larger than what you can consciously perceive. But your body is sort of the radio dial for that. So you can, if you listen to your body and you understand it in a certain perspective, then that helps you to sort of tune up or let's say discern those messages okay so when we develop the root chakra is the first one that develops and that is the genital region the the sort of pelvic region okay and the reason for that being is that when you're a baby you know your sensorial your sensations where you really um start to experience your body as being um something separate and or different from the world is you poop and you pee <laughs> you feel that going in and out of you equally the mouth you you suck you eat so you have kind of two primary what in the literature is called erogenous zones but we really just mean that they're just you have two zones in your body that are the most stimulated which is your mouth and it's like your genital region okay so people who who have root issues, which means that they struggle with a sense of basic security, and usually that's between the ages of zero to six months, maybe one. If if something happened, you weren't held enough, you weren't mirrored enough, you weren't fed enough, or you didn't feel secure for whatever reason as an infant, then as you get older, that energy, which remember is centered in the mouth and in the genital region, can manifest as addictions. Sex addiction, right? Or, or love addiction, or it could also manifest as ingestive addictions. So we've got there and we've got here. So in the literature, we use, and if we're working it from an energetic perspective, in literature, like psychoanalytic literature, they call that the oral phase, right? And it's commonly known in Western psychology that interruptions in the oral phase lead to addictions, okay? Um, I think of it in energetically speaking, that the energy somehow gets arrested there, okay? now. 
the right of the root chakra is to be and to exist. Okay. So now closely tied to the root chakra is the sacral, and that's just moving up a little bit higher between the genitals and the navel. Um, on a woman, this is cisgendered woman, this is the womb space. And this is the part of the body that its element is water and it's associated with fluidity. So how well are you able to flow with your emotions, okay? And additionally, it has to do with duality. How well can you flow between opposites, right? Or what seem to be opposites. How well can you hold ambiguous feelings? And so the right of the sacral is to have and to feel your feelings, okay? So if there's, and that's ages about like zero to two, two, two and a half, okay? This is when you're learning how to use the bathroom, right? And this is when you're learning how to make comparisons. You know, in the Western literature, this is that study, you know, Pavlov's uh, dog and conditioning when a child starts to realize that a fuzzy thing, like there's a dog and there's a cat and they start to make differentiations. That's the sacral. And this is when we're starting to explore and crawl and walk around and we put things in our mouths to figure out what they are, right? We're, still, we're learning that way. So when, we, so let's say there's some arrestments in the root and in the sacral. So ages one to two, two and a half. Probably you've got some attachment stuff going on. And so as a result, as I said before, it's about being able to hold dualities, right? Mom pissed me off, but mom's still a good person. If we have an arrestment in that phase, we're not able to hold that. Mom pissed me off, so mom's a bad person. And then we take that in, right? Let's say your parent was kind of impatient with a young child who um, doesn't understand why the rules are in place and whom they're constantly running after, right? Terrible twos. Let's say your parents just couldn't handle the terrible twos very well. So the message that you receive is, you've pissed me off, and now you think, oh my God, I pissed mom off, I'm bad, right? So we're not able to hold that. Oh, so I pissed, I pissed mom off today. Maybe I didn't behave well, but I'm still a good person. No, you're not. You haven't learned how to do that yet. So what happens is it becomes split. And so all of a sudden you're just a bad person. And it, it gets that pattern gets communicated to our adult relationships. And then we start to feel unworthy. And so we stop, we, we end those relationships before we can... Um, screw it up before they realize how bad we really are, okay? And it might seem um, like a stretch, but believe it or not, those messages, when we're young, they get taken in, and then they manifest themselves in these ways. Now, shame is a little bit higher, and that's the solar plexus that's in your abdomen. And this is really where we talk about our sense of willpower. Um, and the comment in our, in our feed here was talking about um, kind of being messy and, and, and struggling with that. And there's a, you know, ADHD and that kind of thing. Um, I'll share with you, I have ADD. Uh, but so, so it's kind of a combination. So when, when we find ourselves being kind of messy and whatnot, that can be connected to root and sacral stuff as well. Because additionally, in addition to dualities and to creativity, the sacral is about boundaries. And, when, and so boundaries becomes kind of a metaphor for expansiveness or containment. So if if we're kind of expansive, right? If we're kind of messy, if we if we take up a lot of space even though we don't mean to, it's sort of a call for being held. It's like a call for being contained. It's like please come help me. Like come contain me. Let me flow into you, right? That's the water. Let me flow into your container. Right? Um, and it's an unconscious thing. It's something we feel like we don't have control over in the same way that, you know, the follow-up question is, well, how do I, how do I stop what I'm attracted to? And so part of that is, is stepping into your authority and changing what you're attracted to, right? Um, and that has to do with solar plexus stuff. That's stepping into your will, okay? And um, there was a mention in that comment about shame. And so shame is the shadow aspect of the solar plexus. So that there's something about willpower there that um, is being stimulated. So I actually would recommend, um, you know, if you feel like you're struggling more with worthiness and guilt, that you were working on your root and sacral chakras. If you feel that you're struggling maybe with shame-based kind of stuff, work on your solar plexus, okay? Um, and I think that that's actually kind of a nice sort of 
segue into what I'd like to do next week. So maybe what I will do next week is I'll bring on my, my bowls and we can do a meditation and we'll work on the first three chakras, which are usually the ones that are uh, most stimulated with attachment issues. So we'll do a meditation next week on the root uh, and the sacral and then the following we'll do one on the solar plexus. So I, I hope this wasn't too abstract, <laughs> um, but we can explore these things and I would love to hear your comments and um, especially next week when we do the meditations, how you are experiencing it and taking it in. So thank you for your attention today and remember to sign up for our webinar. We're doing a webinar on an introduction to attachment basics on the 24th, September 24th at 2 p.m. So there should be um, an event on this uh, in this group on this page pinned to the top for that. So make sure you sign up, you come with your questions, we'll have a conversation, and I hope you guys have a great Thursday.